imagine. You stand in a small, dark and filthy room. Around you are piles of garment, and the air is almost too hot to breathe. As the sweat drips down your back, you realize that you're standing in a sweatshop factory in India. A young wom woman walks up to you, looks you in the eyes, and tells you her story. The dirt and the heat, those are the work conditions that she has to deal with every day of her life. So this is a scene from a virtual reality experience we made in 2018 about climate change and fashion. As you may know, virtual reality, or VR for short, is when you put on a pair of goggles and are then immersed into another reality. It can be quite overwhelming and emotional. So I've been working with VR for the last four years, and I've come to realize that virtual reality can be so much more than just fun and entertainment. VR can contribute towards creating empathy for others, and this is where I see the true potential of the medium, especially when we take VR to the next level and integrate extra senses beyond vision and sound. So how do we use virtual reality to explain a climate issue? That was the question that the International Climate Organization, Connect for Climate, owned by the World Bank, and the production company Vulcan Production was asking us. So the world is constantly changing, and climate change is a topic that we, as a modern society, cannot and should not try to avoid. But normally, when we talk about climate change, the conversation often turns to melting glaciers or burned down forests. Of course, very important matters, but these happen so far away from our everyday life, which makes it harder for us to see how it relates to ourselves. But there is actually a serious contributor to the climate issue, very close to all of us, fashion. And I can see that you all chose to wear clothes today, Thank God. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> you all somehow decided on what clothes to wear today, whenever you like fashion or not. Because clothes are not just for keeping warm. They communicate who we are and what we stand for. And fashion is important to many of us. But when you include the production, the transportation, the sale and the waste, the fashion industry is actually the second largest polluter in the world right after the oil industry. I know, what's up with that? And why is nobody talking about this? So me and my business partner, Sine, we chose to get this conversation going by making a VR experience that tells the story from this industry. So we call this VR experience X-ray fashion, and it brings you on a journey to see every aspect of the supply chain of garment production. From the inner corner of a sweatshop in India, to a glamorous catwalk in New York, and to the afterlife of clothes. This VR experience is directed by an Italian fashion photographer, Francesco Carosini, and it's his voice that narrates your journey. As an audience, you don't just sit and watch, you walk around in an installation, barefoot and with a head mount on. And as you move through the supply chain, you're not only experiencing the sight and sound, but also a bodily presence. We built this installation so you can feel sensorial effects, like the ground shifting underneath you, wind, heat, water and smell. X-ray fashion is set out to promote empathy towards the human labor and the climate destruction in an attempt to change consumer habits. Now, this story could have been told in many ways, so why VR? VR is known for being the ultimate empathy machine because it gives the audience the opportunity to experience situations from a different perspective and to try scenarios they would never encounter in their everyday life. Unlike other medias like pictures, text and film, VR allows you, the audience to be placed right in the middle of the content and the action. In virtual reality, there's nothing that distances you from the actual content or the people you meet in there. So working with VR, 
I mentioned the word experience. It's important to know what experience means and what we can use it for. Well, an experience can be divided into three steps, according to a Danish professor, Christian Jensen. So the first step happens when our bodies are physically affected. For example, our pulse starts rising as we get excited or scared. This provokes uh, provoke an emotion such as happiness or sadness. And the second step occurs when we subconsciously analyze and comparing what we are experiencing right now to other aspects of our life. And the first step is the interesting part. If an experience is powerful enough, it can change your identity and your habits. And this is important because with this project, we wanted to change people's habits and not just give them the information about this. Let me give you another example. So the inspiration for this VR piece, X-ray fashion, came from a documentary called The True Cost, portraying fast fashion. And this documentary was a powerful experience for me. I was moved by the sight of the terrible work conditions and hearing about the long-term impact that fast fashion has on the climate. I realized that I was an over-consumer of clothes, and the truth about the fast fashion industry struck me on such a personal level that it made me change my consumer habits. I needed this storytelling experience in order to navigate differently in the future by reflecting on my own choice of clothing. And VR can help creating an even more powerful experience, an experience that presents this topic in a new form, a bodily experience. And this could be an important tool to evoke empathy towards the stability affecting and motivating other people to change their habits. So when designing this experience, we, uh, we wanted our audience to go through the same kind of emotions as we did upon seeing this documentary. Shocked, upset, and most importantly, motivated, wanting to change their habits. But feeling empathy is a very subject matter. For me, it was enough to just see the documentary, but for others, they may need more. So uh, in order for that to occur, we had to work within the notion of storytelling and presence. Our theory was that only when feeling presence within VR would the audience be likely to take the message truly to heart. So one way we work with presence is through this theory called the sense of embodiment theory, created by British researcher Mel Slater. And this theory has two components that helps us understand how we, as humans, feel presence within the reality. Namely, sense of self-location and sense of body ownership. So the first one, sense of self-location, refers to your spatial experience of being inside a body. As humans, we identify ourselves by looking down and seeing our body. And I hope you all see a human body as well when you look down yourself. You might want to check that. It's more, it comes more natural to feel presence when we see a body or a reputation of ourselves when moving around in a, within an environment. Something we don't get from watching a movie or seeing a picture. In X-ray fashion, we wanted to give our audience a virtual body, but we couldn't because of technicalities. However, we still wanted our audience to feel some sense of self-location. So what we did was that we gave our audience a repetition of themselves through a shadow that followed the audience every move on the, on the floor. When discussing sense of self-location, another important factor is the peripersonal space. And this is the space from your chest and to the length of your arm, so in this area here. Some also refers to this as the danger zone, since any object entering this area can potentially harm you and therefore needs you to be alert. So we stimulated our Aryan's peripersonal space by having the characters in the film walk close to you and acknowledging your presence by either looking or talking to you. The second component is the sense of body ownership. And this refers to all the sensory information of both visual and tactile inputs. When we see the world and physically feel it at the same time, it will increase our feeling of presence. 
So what we did with this piece was that we implemented a bunch of physical effects to complement the visuals within this VR piece. In the sweatshop scene, we used physical heaters to replicate the hot climate that the workers have to live through every day while manufacturing our clothes. And as you walk into a virtual sewage filled with chemicals, you physically have to walk into water, real-life water as well, at the same time. And this feeling of water around your feet takes many by surprise and have been very efficient. So the more surprised, the deeper the impact. So X-ray fashion premiered at the Venice Film Festival last year and have since then been exhibited all over the world, touring fashion conferences in the US, a UN conference in Kenya, and a month in Doha at Qatar museums. So we are proud to be a part of a movement that spreads the word about sustainability through innovative technology such as VR to a large and diverse audience. But you might ask yourself, what difference has this actually made? Have we succeeded in making people change their habits? And let me answer that. First of all, we have seen all the reaction on people's faces, both during the VR experience and after. Many gasp or shout when they step into the water for the first time. Some are responding to what they see when they meet the garment workers, whispering things for themselves like, I'm sorry, or this is wrong. And it is wrong. Several have even burst into tears right after taking off this head mount. We also handed out questionnaires for people to answer. And here, eight out of 10 people said that it changed something within them, either, that either being opinions, ideas, or knowledge. They said they felt inspired, and that this was very important for the society and the times we live in. We have audience members writing us weeks after they've gone through the experience, stating that they can still feel the heat from the sweatshop and remember how the scenes made them feel. So it's fair to say that this experience lasts only 15 minutes, but makes an impression that lasts a lot longer. And with this, we do believe that we have succeeded in creating a VR experience that can change minds and hopefully moves the audience towards changing their consumer habits for the better. We humans are formed by our experiences. And with VR, we can bring the audience into any part of the world, experiencing it firsthand as if they were really there, making the impact intense and potentially life-changing. So X-ray fashion tells the story of the fast fashion industry. But of course, VR can be used to spread a variety of important messages. It's a wonderful opportunity to experience situations that would not be possible in real life, Stepping, in, stepping into a stranger's shoes, and for a moment, seeing the world from a different perspective. With VR, we can make problems that seem distant, problems that might harm us at a later time, seem closer, so we can form solutions that are better for humankind today and in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.